Hello, everyone. How's it going? Hello. <laughs> Hello, Dan. Nice hat. Hi, Paddy. Thanks for that. Um, I wonder where I got it from. I wonder, yeah. <laughs> um, how's it going, everyone? Uh, you're welcome to another live stream from the Pro Tipster Boys. Uh, I'm afraid uh, Martin isn't with us today. He's struggling with internet stuff, but I'm sure he'll be back as soon as he can during the week. Um, Dan, how's it going? I you know. Monday. Um, another day. Another dollar. Um, it's been a busy morning. Uh, just catching up on uh, what happened over the weekend. A um, few crazy results, a couple of disappointing ones. Uh, one disappointing one in uh, particular. Yeah. Um, and people asking about my new hat. Yeah, it's a nice one. Frederick, yeah. uh, Frederick Mystic, yeah. We went to see an, an, an ice hockey match the other night, folks, down in Czech Republic. It was great fun altogether. Um, for, for a second tier level ice hockey match, it was probably the most professional ice hockey match I've ever been to. <laughs> yeah, by far the best. Ice hockey game I've ever been to, so yeah, it's great. It's really good. Uh, yeah, so if you're ever in a Czech city called Frederick Mystic, then I'd never heard of it until a few days ago either. Uh, check out their uh, ice rink arena; it's it's pretty smashing, you know. And uh, right, uh, Dan, football. Uh, um, uh, I like Jose Mourinho's new uh, outlook, where he's praising teams who uh, beat them off the field. He did this first against uh, Bristol City a few weeks ago when he said it was a great thing. Bristol had won. It's great for the neutrals and that uh, it gives a good story. And he said something uh, similar yesterday. Uh, let me find the quote I had wrote down. Um, he said, Rafa Benitez's win was a beautiful thing. Isn't that nice? Mm. Well, this is the man who's after the award for best behaved manager this year. <laughs> in the Premier League. <laughs> and also Manchester United have won the award for uh, social media, haven't they? Uh, when when Alexis Sanchez, yeah. when Alexis Sanchez uh, signed um, their um, who's their head financial head honcho whoever he is he said at their AGM that um, they had had the most impressions on Twitter of the year so congratulations Manchester United on winning the social media trophy for 2018 it's the <laughs> oh um, yeah. I, I, um, I just read Mourinho said they could have played for 10 hours and didn't score. You know, Mourinho still has not won a game at St. James's Park, ever. That's, that's insane. What a, what a stat. That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's pretty. And, and I was obviously, um, I didn't get to watch the game. I was in the car on the way back to Katowice with a Newcastle fan who was uh, who was very, very downbeat. And half-time, nil nil said, oh, we'll collapse second half. And then when they scored, it was, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This yeah. is a... Uh, it was a good match. It was really good. I was watching it. I was watching, watching it all. And yeah, real back to the wall stuff, real team, you know. It was great. It was really good to watch. But um, what, uh, what do you make of Mourinho's handling of Pogba? Because, I mean, I'm, I'm of the opinion that he doesn't know what to do with him. Uh, I know that there's been, um, there's been quite a bit about this because he played McTominay instead of Pogba the other week, didn't he? Um when you don't know what to do with a 100 million pound player, it's kind of disturbing. <laughs> yeah, um, it is kind of disturbing. And I, I don't get it either because I thought Pogba and Masic were a good um, central midfield partnership. I, I don't get what, what, why he's got a problem with him, but this is Mourinho. I, I think I don't get Man United anymore. I really don't. I didn't think that Sanchez was the right signing for them. Um, I don't know. But they're not, like you say, they're not winning anything this year. No. Uh, I think uh, playing him as a defensive midfielder in front of a, in a very defensive uh, team, it's, it's just strange, you know. It's really strange. And um, look, on to something more positive then. Uh, Spurs are now, they've gone nearly 500 minutes while conceding at Wembley, which uh, looks, looks bodes well for their um, second uh, leg against Juventus in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I had to write a preview about this for, uh, for Pro Tipster. Um, if you go to protipster.com slash betting news and check through the slider, you can see it. A little hint there for people watching. Um, yeah, I, Spurs, they, should, they only won 1-0, but they, sh they should have smashed Arsenal, shouldn't they? Yeah, they should and, have. Uh, I don't know. Mate, um, bear in mind, Aldo Royal was, uh, he was... He said, oh, I'm fit, and Pochettino didn't pick him in the uh, squad at all, which is... Uh, Interesting. 
Um, but anyone who's not Alderweireld, they, they still play really well. Um, Sanchez looks like he's settled down quite well. Um, you know, and he's 21, Davinson Sanchez is, so, you know, it's it's a good um, long-term kind of investment for them. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, Spurs are a, a funny, funny team because every time I think they're about to do well, they, they go and completely Spurs up the situation. Um, you know, Harry, Harry Kane, uh, so he's what? 32 goals this season now. Not just yeah. 30 second. It's amazing. It's incredible, but I think tomorrow is going to be a good test stream. Because Juve, are, of course, have this amazing home record, but Juve are going to be without uh, Barzaglia. Apparently, he's uh, didn't train Sunday. He's got no. a, um, a calf strain, I think I read. Yeah. And Juve, Juve are actually um, a little bit uh for injuries. So well, Dybala is probably out. Um, Howidis, um, Howidis, Howidis. Uh, he's been out all season, though. Yeah, yeah, he's been out all season. Uh, Matuidi's been out for a long time, and there's another lad as well who can't remember. Mm. Um, so, uh, Matuidi's going to be a big miss for them. He's he's been really good for them uh, since since yeah. he transferred in from PSG. But I think Barzakli is a big miss as well because he's an yeah. experienced centre back. You know, you need someone with experience against the class of Harry Kane. So, yeah, yeah. Be interesting. Um, isn't it? Yeah. But it's also interesting because Spurs are like Lamella's come back into the team. Um, you know, he's he's been getting minutes. I wonder, I wonder if he'll travel. You know, because Delhi Ali's been off the uh, boil a little bit, hasn't he? Of late, so mm. too busy, uh, too busy in front of the camera. That's what it is. <laughs> Dan, who said this? When we arrived, we were in the deep ocean. It was very deep and dark. We saw no fishes. We won some games to put our noses out of the water. It was the first time we'd smelled the fresh air. Now, in this moment, we've started swimming and we can now go to the coast. That's got to be Carlos Carvalho. <laughs> he, he loves his fish metaphors, doesn't he? <laughs> or sea metaphors. <laughs> They're great. What wonders, um, I hope you, uh, in the, in the uh, live we did on Friday, I said to back Swansea against Burnley, I hope you did, 2.42. Good boy. Yeah, it, it it took a while coming, but it came. Um, yeah. I think only I think only man, you really let me down this weekend. Oh, Derby conceded, so um, that that one never happened. Oh, did you see the Jamie Vardy stat? No. Uh, here, here it is uh, from Up the Joe on the tenth of February. Uh, Jamie Vardy is the first player to ever score against Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, and Spurs in the same Premier League season. That's an amazing wow. stat. Brilliant, isn't it? That's yeah. pretty, pretty good. It's hard. It's hard not to like Vardy. It's, he's a, he's a class player. Um, well, may, maybe maybe as a footballer, but as a person, as a footballer, I don't think as a footballer. As what happens on the pitch, Dan, is what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> um. Did, did you actually talking about Rafa Benitez? I read um Conor McManara at uh, Conor McNamara of BBC. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interviewed Rafa Benitez after the game. And he did a quick mic test, like like you do, to check the levels are right. And he, he, you know, one, two, and Rafa goes, no, no, one nil. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Wasn't it? I like the way at the end uh, because there's, there's a lot of uh, acrimony between Jose Mourinho and Benitez. They really don't like each other. And uh, fair play, Mourinho put his hand out, gave him, gave him a hug, and everything. So uh, he, he was he was uh, magnanimous in defeat. Fair play to him. Maybe he is trying actually to be the best behaved uh, uh, manager. But, Maybe, but I don't know. I can't trust him, Dan. I can't trust him. I, I don't trust think he's him. just playing mind games by doing it because he, he's he's being nice. And everyone's going, "What's he want? What's he yeah, what's, what's he doing? <laughs> How's he trying to get in my head?" And it's <laughs> the, the, the double bluff in that he's not trying to get in the head, but he's doing getting into the head by not trying. I don't know. Yeah. Exactly, man. That's exactly what it is, you know. Um, what else happened there over the weekend? Was there any uh, any yeah, um, strange ones? Well, it wasn't strange, but um, Birmingham City fell to defeat the Second City derby. Yeah. Um, yeah, we watched that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we watched eighty minutes of it until the second <laughs> goal when I went ski gas and <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Um, yeah, I miss I missed Ndoy getting sent off for choking. Uh, uh, John Terry, which is a shame because it's the best thing he'd done all game. <laughs> um, but it could have been could have been so different. Uh, we were what the thickness of a potion going one 0 up in the first half. Mm-hmm. So 
Yeah, yeah you know, fine lines, fine lines. Um, much, but like, you know, like we were saying when we were watching it, if, if Birmingham had, had a, 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 even one central midfielder, they'd be half decent, you know? We've been, we've been saying this for, uh, Birmingham City fans have been saying this for like two years now. Um, we've lacked um, someone in the midfield who can put a foot on it, put mm. a foot on it and dictate the tempo of the game. You know, you've got David Davis, he runs around a lot, but he's not a great passer. He's a good box-to-box. He gets around, but he's not a great passer. Kifton Bell, whose job is to um, break up play and give the ball to someone who can pass. And Chekin Doy, whose second touch is a tackle, and he's just arms and legs. Arms and legs and fury. Um, and it doesn't quite work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, a couple of... Couple of uh... Good um, results in, in Europe, in Italy. Uh, Juventus won uh, 2-0. Lots of people were actually... Uh, well, Mark, Martin backed them to win on, on the podcast. Uh, pro tips to Marco, our Serie A expert. He actually went with Fiorentina. Uh, mm. Double chance. But Juventus won that. They looked fairly strong. They put out a strong team. We, all, we were all wondering how, how, they'd, uh, or how, how they'd start the game while thinking about um, you know, Harry Kane and co. On, on Tuesday. Napoli won. 4-1 as well to keep to, to stay up at the top uh, La Liga though over in La Liga Barca Barca couldn't score against Getafe that's that's pretty bad at home that is bad and uh, Cristiano Ronaldo got his 43rd hat-trick for Real Madrid insane isn't it no. it's just obscene no, it's, um, see this is the thing with Real Madrid man now that the Champions League is starting back now we're going to see another I think we're going to see another Real Madrid that we haven't seen now uh, oh, probably all season well um, PSG is the interesting one because they played Toulouse and um, they actually rested Cavani and Thiago Silva mm. um, because they needed them for the Real Madrid game Neymar played scored and uh, there was a picture of him on Instagram after and he's got both his ankles in ice Oh, he got so, kicked, didn't he? Yeah, yeah they yeah. kicked him to hell. Uh, um, it's the French League, man. That's all they do is they just kick lumps out of him. Yeah, <laughs> Monaco smashed on share, but Leon lost. So, you know, there's like more ground for PSG at the top. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. Look, um, talking about the podcast, uh, we, we, we did a, an accumulator of uh, five tips that uh, the lads had agreed on. And we done fairly well. We got three out of five. We had Villarreal Alves, that lost. We had Villarreal to win. Uh, Spurs Arsenal, Spurs won, that, that was us. Steven is Luton, however, uh, we tipped Luton to win, but they lost. Uh, Napoli Lazio over two and a half, we got that. Southampton Liverpool, Liverpool were tipped. So we didn't do too bad, three out of five. Uh, hopefully we'll do better now uh, this Thursday. Uh, Dan, um, tonight, um, ooh, is it Conte's last match against the cursed West Brom? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, talking to West Brom fans, no, it's not. They're, they're, they're all really scared. Um, they've, they've got injuries. Um, they've Jay Rodriguez now, um, the, the striker. I don't think he can play because he's got this uh, racist uh, charge hanging over him. Uh, he's supposed uh-huh. to have used a racially offensive language to Guy Bong or Brighton Hove Albion. Jay Rodriguez has 100% denied he said anything. Um, uh-huh. To make that clear. So, but, yeah, I think West Brom will get smashed. Mm. Um, uh, what, what would you look at then? Would you look at overs or the handicap? Um, the, the, the problem is, is that it, it's which Chelsea comes out to play. Is it the Chelsea that can be bothered or is it the Chelsea that can't be bothered? Because yeah. they look so poor in the last game, especially defensively. They've, they've really got to book up their ideas. Um, they're they're facing Barcelona next week, like. Oh. <sighs> Well, Barcelona. Barcelona at the moment should take them to pieces. Yeah. And I think I saw Conte saying on BBC News today or something about he um, he couldn't get the transfers and he wanted. Yeah, but like, so, you know, there's still that going on as well in the background. The thing is as well though, like when he took the Chelsea gig, he should have known he should have known all about that. He should have done his research. I'm sure he has people working for him to do all that kind of stuff, but he should know he has no control. Like you go into Chelsea, you, you do have no control over who's coming in and out. You're just a, you're you're just a coach. You're not you're not a manager. You're a coach. Hmm. You know. Yeah, it's a tough one, isn't it? But twenty-seven million second. Can't see that happening soon. I don't think so. Abramovich is much tighter with the money now. Smarter with the money, I suppose we should say. Uh, right, Dan. Look, um, I am I am gonna I am gonna put you under pressure. Give us a pick for Chelsea tonight. Um, 
let me think about it. I, I think I would go for Chelsea to win uh, 2-0 in this game. So, um, have you got odds there? Because I don't have any uh, open. What do you want to have? On, overs is 1.75. Under is 2.12. Uh, what about the Asian handicap? Handicap are, um, minus 1.25 and Chelsea 1.86. I'd take 1.5. I'd take yeah. 1.5, which is probably about evens. Um, mm. Alonso's going to come back. Alonso's a big miss for them. It was a big miss for them. Johnny Evans should be back for Albion, but um, they're missing Krikoviak uh, for for sure. And uh, Chelsea won't be able to play Bakayoko, which... Um, I, I read a I read a satirical article where Chelsea fans were appealing his one match blank because they wanted six. <laughs> oh, yeah, they really don't like him, do they? <laughs> no. no. Right. Um, um, say, sorry, go ahead. No, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Right, so look, uh, we'll finish up, lads, because we, we're going to do a Champions League podcast now and uh, that will be edited and it will be coming out to you this evening. So you'll have plenty of time to listen to it before the Tuesday and Wednesday games. If you're watching the Chelsea match, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm, I'm a bit torn. I like Conte. I don't like Chelsea. I want more Conte in the Premier League. So uh, I, I actually do want them to win. And I, I feel I'm going to have to take a shower now after saying that. <laughs> Make sure and go over to Pro Tipster as well. We have some uh, brilliant uh, betting articles. Uh, go over there and have a look for the section betting news. You'll find some fantastic previews there written by, you know, written by our expert Dan. And uh, what else? Yeah, just get over to Pro Tipster and have a look at all the great tips people are sharing. And if you're good at sharing uh, sports tips, you know, become a member because we'll we'll pay you. We'll give you real money uh, when when you uh, share enough. And um, yeah, just sharing the love. You know, that's all it is. Right then, uh, we'll go. We'll be back at, uh, later on today with a Champions League podcast. So ch- keep an eye out for that. All right, from me and Dan. Then take it easy. Bye bye. Bye. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out ProTipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipsterGlobal. Or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipsterEN or ProTipsterIRL. Bye.